Here's another match of my brand new T30. You can see the enemy team already have a retard platoon to contend with, a TOG platoon with a super potion. Excellent. So it's Muravanka. Um, obvious plan here is to stay the fuck away from the forest and hold the ridge line in the west, which is the dominant position that controls this map, and is also the reason why South Spawn should never, ever, 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 ever send more than a couple of tanks to the forest, if any at all. From this ridge line, if forest collapses, all you have to do is just point your tank east, and suddenly it's not a useful position. I mean, you can see from here, this, this position commands the entire heights of the map. You can see through the village, into the forest, up to the north. This is a place to be. So our ELCs both fucking landing train into the same direction because why would you need one scout in one position when you can send two to one position instead? And you get the first shot off into the T-34, at least these idiots are spotting something, even if it's accidentally. Somebody tracks him, and that allows me to get off another shot, which retracks him. So one ELC is down already, big surprise. You can see that quite a number of the enemy team are in the forest, which is good news for me, it means less to worry about. And then we have targets lit in the north. Waiting for a shot here on this 59. He gets tracked. I go for the Capola, I don't know if that hit or not. You'll just see in the post games if there's any blind shots that connected. Because I took quite a couple this match. Or quite a few rather. Nev has pushed up a little bit too far for my liking. But, incidentally, he was probably the best positioned of all of us to avoid getting hit by the JP2, who is in the arsehole spot. Because our team let him get there without being hit. So I start pulling back a bit, trying to find a hold down position from the JP2. I just snap a shot off at that guy, but I didn't lead him enough. Had I led him a little more, it probably would have been through his turret roof. My sense of object permanence is rather poor, and so I push all the way up again, thinking, oh, I can tank all these guys, but... I wasn't honestly expecting the JP-2 to get brave again. It's an interesting place to put one, because the JP-2 is quite a... F well, not quite a large tank to it's a very large tank to spray. And while it's quite mobile, it just its size and its relatively thin arm will make it totally unsuitable for a position like that. If our puppies could aim, or indeed if my gun handling wasn't so bad, being a T-34, he would have been dead quite a while ago. Take out what I can. You can see that pretty much everything that isn't the JP2 is bouncing off me without having much effect. This is the magic of the T34 turret. Both the IS and Proto just bounce off me. See, I'm telling my platoon mates to focus that JP2 down, although at the moment he's not spotted, so I go for the IS3 and manage to get a shot through his turret cheek. Scoots is already been killed, but now he's still doing all this lead full health. Once again, he's in a better position actually to cover him from them than I am, which I didn't actually realize at the time. So I just sort of muck around here, trying to find a spot where I can get pulled down enough so the JP2 won't dunk on me next time he pops up. At this point, I'm one-shotable for him if he high rolls. Fire a blind shot just in case trying to ward him off. Then I find this guy driving across the open. But the more important target spotted. So 
so I decide not to go for the IS-3 just yet. Unfortunately that costs our uh, Stuart Emil his tank, although he probably would have died anyway. RT-69 as you can see is firing HE. Four shot autoloader doing 70 damage a shot. He's doing about as much damage per shot, oh sorry, per clip as he could do with one shot if he just fired a fucking AP or heat round. So I managed to pop the IS-3 at the expense of some hit points. Now I'm really worried about that JP-2. See me rather than redundantly telling the nerves to be careful when it's me that's been taking all the hits. Cleans up the Type 59. And the Proto's trying to push into him, but seems not to realize that there's an IS there to back him up. <laughs> Which gets racked by the JB2 actually. Our genius HE shooting T69 also drives in and the JP2 is lit aiming at 69 I think so I put a shot into him you can see two pretty obvious bounces off my gun ramp right there T34 is basically if you took, uh, take the T29 and gave it a 120mm gun at tier 8. It doesn't get preferential matchmaking, obviously the gun is far too good for that, but it can handle tier 10s quite comfortably, even without firing gold. If you switch to gold, it will easily pen pretty much anything in the game. It's a very, very good gun, but being on a tier 8 tank, it has atrocious gun handling. Much unlike a certain recently added German tank destroyer at tier 8 which gets tier 10 guns with excellent gun handling. Hmm, I wonder which I could be talking about. So I'm preamed on the forest just waiting for somebody to spot these guys because I don't want all our low health tanks to suicide in one at a time. Then I notice our T-34-3 has been sitting around doing nothing all game. In fact, he's been doing so little, he still has full health. Now it's just a game of waiting for him to spot something, although rather than spotting, he's suiciding out in front of their field of fire. Thankfully I popped that guy before he can get his shot off. And now it's just the T-34 left to us hiding in the depths of the forest somewhere. As you can see, this isn't exactly a fast tank, but it's not too bad. And Nev manages to take out the last guy at the expense of our HE firing T69, who was apparently disappointed with this outcome after firing HE all match. <laughs> 